this is the front spindle setting uh, that I had on here and I'm a little scared of it because I'm going to be running those tires on it which are a lot bigger and this is just a standard lawnmower front end spindle set up so I've got a uh, an idea on something that I'm going to do to make it a lot heavier rather than three quarter three quarter inch shaft like this is I'm going to use one inch shaft and try to beef it up just a little bit but let me get started on that I bought these hubs I've decided to use them and they were splined inside of them so I had to drill them out to a one inch hole and not having a way that I can mount these in my drill press or anything I had to use a battery operated drill so that I would have the clutch in it and I didn't want to use the electric drill because I was afraid it would rip my arm off or tie me up in the thing if it bound up which it did a lot so um, got those drilled out finally this is kind of the setup I'm going to go with. Um, this is the arm that I had on the on the mini semi. I'm going with a longer piece here. I'm going to make this C shape thing here with a one inch axle sticking out of it to mount the hubs on. Uh, I didn't show you all the cutting of all this because I'm using my radial arm saw over here with a cutter disc on it and it overheats a lot. I don't have a chop saw, I don't have a band saw, so I'm having to use whatever I got. So I ended up giving up on this thing because it kept kicking out the overheat mechanism on it and just ended up just using my my grinder with a cutoff wheel in it to cut all this stuff. But I've got to drill three quarter inch holes here and I've got to drill you know my three quarter inch holes here, here and then a I'm going to drill a one inch for the axle to go in slightly so I can reinforce it on the inside and outside a little bit more. But this is the piece of shaft I'm going to use. It's probably a little bit too long. I'm probably going to have to cut it off a little bit. But I'll get a little bit more fabricated up and check back in just a second. After very much trial and tribulations, I finally got this piece made. Because I had to cut this off, I cut two pieces of angle, welded them together here. I had to put a three quarter inch hole in here, a three quarter inch hole in here, and then I made a one inch hole through here, stuck the shaft through there, and then had to weld it in really good. So now after all of that, I got to make the other side. So I'll see how long it takes me to do the other side. This is the front axle piece. I uh, had to put these had to be longer for the way I designed it. And the, on the original one, they were at quite a bit of angle, so I had to straighten them up a little bit. A little gusset on here. I got to do finish welding. that's the axle this is all of the pieces I've had to make you saw me making these pieces it's two pieces of angle welded together piece of one inch shaft this is a this is the pins that go down through here uh, I don't have the hole drilled in the bottom yet for a cotter pin but that's just three quarter stock cross piece this one I've already got the the hub on it already but let's start assembling this thing see what it's going to look like two holes in this 
where I could put two cotter pins in there for safety. All right, I'm gonna put these, I made these blocks to go in here just to stabilize this while I'm putting it together. Then the bushing goes top and bottom. Goes between there like that, and then one of these pins drops down through all of it. Hopefully. And all lined up. It's a trick. Put this one together here. Same thing on it, mission top and bottom. That dropped right in. three washers on there just to space it out a little bit on this then my hub assembly and I put grease fittings in here so I'll be able to grease them later on I've got grease fittings in these pieces right here too that we'll be able to grease later on and then this bushing goes in here this is a 7 8 to a 1 inch bushing basically the, uh, the axle steps down right here so I'm putting this piece on there to uh, act as a spacer and also as a bushing and then a washer that bushing back in there all the way there we go and then I'm putting two two snap rings on it for safety and for basically my groove in the axles really thick enough for two don't know how well one would stay in there if I can do it without smashing my fingers that's it now I've got to put my tabs on here to come out for tie rod in and steering linkage and all of that fun stuff. Trying to figure out my geometry on everything. I've just got some pieces tacked on here for my tie rod and I got a tie rod running across there and the it looks pretty well in line all the way across there and then I tacked this on here so that when I turn, I've got this just temporary up too. So that when I turn it to the right, I'm probably gonna have to put me some stops on there, some kind of way to keep it from turning too far. But that's that's probably way too short a turning radius. It's probably gonna have to stop about right there to keep the tire from rubbing on anything but this tire should turn at one radius and this one should be slightly less which actually it kind of looks that way it looks just like it but I just have this temporary in we can see it turn It seems to be working pretty good. So I'm going to get these tabs, go ahead and weld these tabs in place. But I've got to uh, re-tap these existing holes on the hub and a couple of them I have to drill and tap to 
put the wheels on there. I'm going to end up putting these wheels on the front and uh, end up using these wheels back here in the back. Got to do a lot of cleaning up and painting on them. But that's kind of the setup so far. I've been looking at this steering right here and it's a, a regular lawnmower steering setup where it has this kind of fan gear right here and then the small gear that that turns it and I've got some uh, vice grips on here right now and they're almost sitting straight this way but if you'll notice when I turn the wheels that's about a half of a turn of the steering wheel to pretty much full lock on the steering if I turn it the other way half a turn we're straight half of a turn the other way we're at full lock I really want the ratio to be more than that I don't I don't want that quick of steering plus of course I don't have everything tightened down right now but this system has a whole lot of play in it so I was watching another YouTuber's video and he used the front worm gear mechanism off of a snow blower that actually turns uh, the little mechanism that throws the snow and it's got a nice nice little gearbox in it and he used it for steering on his off-road mower that he had built so I just happened to have a snowblower that you know everybody in Tennessee needs a snowblower uh, that I've been thinking about tearing it apart and using the motor off of it um, but I've taken it apart and I have that piece that he used off of it and I'm going to convert it onto here and I'm going to get started on that right now this is the gearbox from the snowblower and I think I'm actually going to move it back a little bit from where I had uh, the other steering. And I'm going to bring it out on this side because the way this one works, the way I need it to turn, turns the opposite of the other one. So I'm going to have to move this steering arm right here over to this side. And like I say, I'm going to move it back a little bit where the steering wheel will be more straight up and down and a little closer to the driver. So I'm going to get my mounting pieces fabricated and uh, get a little bit done on this. This few seconds of video took a couple of hours to build this stuff, but uh, took a piece of angle iron, drilled a one inch hole, put a three quarter bushing in here, right here. Had to drill another hole in the frame to put a three-quarter bushing in there. Had to cut the shaft off. I had to cut out the middle of the angle piece for the bottom of the housing to drop down through. And I've just got it clamped in place. I'm going to end up having to uh, drill a hole put a cotter pin through here then I've got this piece made to go on to here I'll have it slid up close and I'm gonna drill a hole and put a, a cotter pin in it too uh, I had it welded to the shaft before and I want to be able to remove it if I, I want to that's why I'm I'm not gonna weld this up either I've got it clamped in place I'm gonna drill and and bolt it that way if I ever have to service this piece I can uh, take it off and service it without having to cut it back loose just to give you an update on where I'm at so far I showed you me making these pieces right here well I added a piece of angle down through here to reinforce each edge of this 
and I put a rod coupling, half inch rod coupling in there with a little piece of all thread to make me bump stops. Put this little piece of metal on here and I put the bump stops front and rear on both sides. So you got them on this side too and the piece of angle. And the other thing I did was there was a little bit of slop in my bushings right here, uh, a brass bushing. So now, I mean, I'm I'm working that around right now. I got no no slop at all in it. Uh, back and forth, I have just nearly nothing. I mean, it's it's tightened it up a whole lot from what I had it. Same thing on this side. Got my piece of angle put on here. The half inch rod coupling. Welded this little piece on here for the bump stop. And then I made a, an arm for it. This is actually a half inch rigid pipe. I took the piece, uh, a short I had a short tie rod, it was maybe, I don't know, six or eight inches long, had the threading at each end. I cut it in half, and it's actually up inside of this, and I drilled a hole and plug welded it in there, and then welded it around this front edge. But now it's about 15 inches long, I think. Goes back here to this piece right here. I was planning on drilling this and putting a pin through it where it could be taken off. Uh, I was drilling it with a small drill bit and the drill bit broke in there and wedged it all together so I said the heck with it and I just went ahead and put a couple of beads of weld on it. So it's now not removable. But if I have to work on this, this side is still removable where I can take these bolts out, pull this side off right here then take these bolts out and service it, whatever I need to do. But, yes, much better as far as the turning radius. Now, from lock to lock, I have about three turns. Uh, before, when I had the other system on there, I had one full rotation of the steering before, and now I have about three, which makes it a lot better. Tightens everything up a lot better, too. But I'm very much a lot happier with this steering setup. It's a lot heavier made. I'm fixing to put the wheels on it here in just a minute. And check for my where my stops are to make sure that the tire's not going to hit anywhere on here. Uh, I am going to put basically a rubber bump stop in place of where this block is here to limit it to about that much travel and I'll have a bump stop on each side but there is a little bit of movement internally about that much back and forth before you start moving anything so I'm gonna see if I can tighten that up a little bit but I can actually live with that that, that would be okay as you can see I have the tires on it just to check for steering clearances and all that but if I turn it this way I'm not touching there and I'm not touching there if I change the suspension up and down I'm not touching anywhere and that's still giving it pretty good bit of angle with the steering all right if I go back the other way I'm good here at up suspension down everything's good same thing over here that's up all the way down all the way so it looks like the steering is gonna be fine and I am glad to finally more or less put a done stamp on something
but it's looking pretty good.